Now we're ready to solve the problem. In part one, we wrote a few utility functions in the util object, such as sieve, which gives us all of the prime numbers under a limit, digits, which gives all of the digits in a number, and the number of digits of a number. So now we can use these functions to actually go ahead and solve this problem. The first step is going to be calculating all of the prime numbers under a million because that's what the problem tells us to search. So primes under million is going to be, and I can go ahead and import everything from util. Save one million. So now that we have our primes under a million, we can go ahead and calculate which of these are circular. So you can do val circular primes equals to primes under a million. Now before we go ahead and go and calculate these circular rotations, we can do a quick check in maybe circular. What we're going to do is check that none of the digits are a multiple of two or five, because if they are, at some point, they'll become the last digit in the number, and the number will not be prime. So we can t do maybe circular num of type int, and this is going to be equal to digits num dot for all. We take our number, and we want to check that the number mod 2 is equal to 0, so not equal we want to make sure that it's not equal to zero or the number is equal to five. Now the reason we can do equal to five and not mod five is because the only other case when n will be divisible by five is when n is zero and that will be handled by this case. Now we can go ahead and do a filter, maybe circular. And let's go ahead and print all in circular primes. I can run this. And something. Okay, so now we have all of the primes under a million, which are might might be circular. Now, one thing I just noticed, and I was quite confused when it took that long, was because we actually did 10 million, which is more than what we need to do. We only need 1 million. So if we run now, it's going to be a lot faster. And we can see here that we don't have any numbers with two a multiple of 2 or 5 in it. One thing we do need to do, though, is add 2 and 5, the number themselves, to this because we know that 2 and 5 are prime. Now we can go ahead and filter the ones to check if they are circular. So we can take a number. To calculate the circular rotations of a number, what we're going to do is we're going to iteratively take the last digit bring it to the take it and bump it up to the first digit of the number and shift all the remaining digits to the right now to be able to bump up that last number last digit to the beginning of the number we need to multiply it by a power of 10 and we can pre-calculate these powers of 10 in power bumps and this is going to be 0 until number of digits in 1 million minus 1. The reason we can we do minus 1 here is because if you have n digits you're going to multiply you you're going to want to multiply your last digit by the number of remaining digits which is n minus 1. 
Now we can map each of these to math.pow. We want to do 10 raised to that power and convert that to an int. Now, since we're iteratively calculating circular rotations of the number, we can create a var curve number, which is num to start out with. And we can calculate the power bump for this number because we know the length of this number is not going to change. So power bump is going to be power bumps at number of digits num and we're going to subtract one from this. Now that we have current num and the power bump, we're ready to go ahead and calculate all of the circ circular rotations of the number and check if they're prime. So we want to go from one until, and I'm going to move num of digits num into an external vowel. Cause so now we can do digit count is equal to this. And we can use digit count here. Cause, and the reason I did that is we're going to need to use that digit count again here. So one until digit count, because you don't want to do one to digit count, because then the last number we would check would be the number we started out with, which we've already checked by running our sieve. So we're going to do one until digit count. And for all, so for each of these iterative steps, we want to first um, take kernum and rotate it. So to rotate it, first we're going to take all the numbers except for the last one and shift them to the right. So I'm going to do kernum divided by 10 to do that. And then we need to add the last digit bumped up to the first digit. So to do that, we take kernum, we mod 10 to get the last digit, and we multiply it by power bump. So that gives us our new current num. And all we have to do now with this new current num is check if primes under a million contains current num. And now we can see why we wanted primes under a million to be a set. Because when you're dealing with a set, the contains operation is a lot faster. So now we filtered them all and now we can run. And we get our list of circular primes. And we can see check some of them. 37, we know that, that circular, that's a circular prime because 37 is prime and 73 is prime. And similarly for 97. But we don't care about what numbers are circular, pri circular primes. We only care about how many. So we're going to replace filter with count. We can run. And we get our answer, 55. So that's it for problem number 35. I'll see you next time when we solve problem 36.